Hello my soccer universe. It actually was quite the uh, exciting end to the European qualifiers and now heading into the summer. I think we can go with a good feeling. We had a few near surprises or, or surprises even already on Monday and yesterday we had quite the big ones, uh, especially with Poland losing to Moldova. I think that was a big surprise for sure. I'm of course very happy Austria is very well on the way to qualify for the first time for a tournament played in Germany. They have not done that so far, neither for either one of the World Cups nor for the Euros. 74, this was actually a big tragedy in Austria, but you know, before my time. Uh, and then we had the guy on the thumbnail, Cristiano Ronaldo, not only achieved for the first male player to achieve 200 caps, which is already a huge achievement. And yes, there may be people that say maybe this was the time now to not have him play anymore. But I'm pretty sure this is a record that he wanted to have. And then on top of that, he scored the winner in Iceland late on. So make, uh, making his day even more special. And yes, on this channel, Cristiano did ne never received as much love as he probably should have deserved or whatever. Uh, but on the other side, I want to really recognize achievements when they are happening. And it speaks of his longevity, the way he's taking care of his body. And maybe for me and many others, he is in semi-retirement in Saudi Arabia. This is a big achievement for him. We also had the few big uh, teams that were playing, uh, getting rather easy wins, although England's was way more easy than France. Uh, we had, of course, a controversy in Belgium with Courtois leaving the camp, and it's not quite clear uh, whether he's upset or not about being uh, or not being the captain against Austria. So that is a story to follow. But I think overall the uh, biggest stories are, you know, the two teams here up here that had big swings in their qualification successes: Slovakia suddenly looking really good to qualify, and also Turkey had quite some results falling their way and are looking very well on the way to. Germany next year. Let's look at a few results that I want to highlight. Of course, we have to start in Manchester, where at Old Trafford, England were playing against Northern Macedonia, and it was one-way traffic. Uh, at this moment, I would argue that England are the best side in Europe. And it makes it probably even more galling uh, that you completely threw away the Nations League, because that's a tournament that you could have e e easily won. But you're in League B right, right now. But uh, ever since the World Cup started, England are an absolute top side in the world. And they lost the quarterfinal against France already in unlucky circumstances. I think they, could, they, could, they can and will do damage in the future. I'm pretty sure will it be enough for the first trophy since 66? That remains to be seen, of course, because of the big hump. But I actually think, yeah, you probably need now two cycles, but then the Nations League you could win. <laughs> Let's put it that way. In any case, uh, at, at the game, uh, Bukayo Saka, the standout performer with three uh, goals. I think his second one, or was it the third one? A uh, brilliant shot from, uh, from, from the outside. Harry Kane getting an attitude and Kelvin Phillips and Marcus Rashford also, but one-way traffic. It was also most of the time one-way traffic in Saint-Denis. However, France could not uh, convert their chances on one hand. Uh, the Greeks held really, really, really tight. But there was a certain sloppiness in the France play. For all the uh, might that they poured onto the Greek defense, who looked out of sorts most times, they never created any, many, uh, any clear chance. And the, and the most notable thing happening early on in the game was that uh, Kylian Buffett uh, thrice tried to uh, get a penalty which then France got in the 50th, uh, in, yeah, <laughs> it was in the 50th minute, it took a while, um, in the box, which, uh, yes, I can see, I think it was, um, I, I don't remember, but I I, I think the, part, the, the penalty was non-controversial. What's more controversial is that on the first attempt, Mbappe's uh, attempt is saved by Odysseus, uh, Benfica goal, goalie, and I have to say, I mean, Gustavo Poyet for... Greece, that's an interesting appointment, but I have to say this Greek squad, there's something growing because the you recognize players from the big league, so this is you usually a good sign. He saves it and then he's just to be off the line, but when I see the replay, I think his foot was on the back. 
Honestly, and when I see how Unna Simon uh, saved the day before against Croatia, this didn't make much sense to me. I really thought this was a missed call by the ref. Bobby scores, of course, on a second try. Then Lele Don Mavro Panos is um, uh, pulls back. Uh, attacker uh, is sent off. France probably should have made it to nil, but you know, Greece. The Greeks held tight, had a few chances here, here and there with a little, little bit of luck. They get out here with a draw, which would largely boost their ch ch chances. And you know, if you now compare, I mean, it's hard to compare with two slots. But France 4 0 over the Netherlands, 1 0 over Greece. Watch that space. Ireland keep their slim hopes alive with 3 0. Um, we have also Kazakhstan is a team that could do some damage beating Northern Ireland. So uh, we have to watch that one. Denmark only 1-1 one, one in Slovenia. I think Denmark is kind of falling side to side with another surprising result. Amduni gave Switzerland two first half goals. And they were so in control of that, 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 that the game that it seems like they are cruising to an easy victory. Then Mihaila in the 89th pulls one back for Romania out of nowhere. And then in the 90 second he gets he gets an equalizer. Literally out of nowhere. This was not deserved, but this is smash and grab. This is exactly what Romania needed. Uh, Switzerland will probably not mind too much because they will qualify anyway. But that was a pretty big point for Romania for their hopes of qualifying for the first tournament since 2016. Uh, Turkey completely dominated Wales. Uh, Wales being in really rough shape, um, heading already an early goal through Jelic. Uh, this is a lot for offside. And seemingly Turkey tried everything they could. And every attempt was kind of thwarted. They had another goal. They is allowed uh, to, to handball a little bit later on. Uh, then before that, Chalanoglu missed the penalty. Uh, moral, before the first, 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 first half, was already sent, sent off with a red card. At first you think, yeah, this looks, but uh, when, when we see the replay, it's a red card. We don't need to talk about that. And then it must have felt like an absolute um, relief uh, when I uh, gets the 1-0 just about eight minutes after John Ogle missed the penalty and the goal was disallowed. And then uh, Gulia with a brilliant shot makes it 2-0 in the 80th and Turkey get a very well-deserved win. And as I said, Turkey are very well on their way to Germany where they will have plenty of support. I can tell you already that. Then yesterday evening, the game that I watched was of course Austria-Sweden. I'm wearing the jersey that I got for another Austria-Sweden match. I said it before, Austria-Sweden is the match that I've seen most live four times already um, and Austria and Sweden always seem to meet. Funnily enough, Sweden have never gotten more than a point in Vienna. Uh, the game was, especially at first of all, a rather level affair uh, with Austria. I mean, from the kickoff, they're going forward. There was no back pass. It was uh, to the side and then they're running forward. For forward. This shows you the attitude that the Austria team at the moment has. However, uh, it, the precision in the attack is really letting them down and also the finishing. However, there was also a period, especially between the 10th and the 15th minute, where Sweden very well could, could have taken the lead. They had a, a couple of chances. Um, a, a close range header that Alex Schlager um, saved. Then Porsche pulls down, um, I think, Isaac, potentially a last man, although there was another player on the side. Uh, and then the free free kick uh, forced back pull, pull and goal. Uh, it was really, really open. It's just in the last. 10 minutes where Austria then created chance after chance after chance after chance. And Robin Olsen, much maligned Robin Olsen, became the hero in uh, the Swiss Swiss goal, especially how he saved one of the shots from Alex Schlager. That was just pure, pure reaction. Other than that, I think most of the finishing was a little bit too central and, uh, you know, with good goalkeeping positioning, should probably be saved. But it was really annoying and then in the second half it continues this way despite Rangi making very aggressive change, uh, changes. I mean his lineup was very uh, made in such a way that he can always put another good player on and give um, give his better players some, some some rest also have some speed in, in the attack which honestly didn't work out all that well but you know uh, Anatovic came on, Weber had to come off for Porsche who had the Jäger look out and a little bit of Sabitzer and Grilic it got more offensive and more offensive. Um, I think Gregorich himself should, should have had two, but just at the moment, like 65th minute or so, where the game started to fizzle away, 
Then Austria struck. It was a shot by Grilic in the 81st minute that Raul Robinosen just could parry a little bit and Baumgartner dust it off. And then uh, in the 89th minute, it's a 3 on 1. Should have been converted so sooner that um, Sabitza, Gregoric, and Baumgartner. Uh, uh, Gregoric takes the shot, another shot saved by Foster Baumgartner. Makes it 2 0. A very well deserved vi vi victory, but it was a very hard fought. And the goals, not pretty, but tell the story of how hard fought that win was. And that means Austria have now 9 points from 3 home games, 1 point away from Belgium, 10 out of 4 looking really, really, really good. Now it's 3 away games and the home game against Belgium. But I think they are good enough to get to get the necessary, necessary points to qualify. Uh, not the same story for Bosnia, who find themselves down early to Luxembourg. Then Haji Mahetovic uh, misses a penalty in the uh, sec second half and then uh, Sinani makes it actually two nil for Luxembourg. And this Luxembourg team is one that can surprise anyone uh, these days. Heartbreak for Bulgaria, uh, who should have probably scored already in the first half, but then this both of in the second half early on makes it 1-0 and Bulgaria look like they are holding out, having even more chances. Probably would have deserved to win this game and then with the last shot of the game in the 96 minutes last, which gets an equalizer. Like the Sentinel shorts for Bulgaria and, you know, I'm going to Bulgaria on vacation, so maybe grab that one. Let's see. Uh, in the Austria group, Belgium gets an easy win. Two Lukaku goals. Didn't even celebrate this very, very much. And then Bakayoko lay, laid on. Um, Belgium and Austria. That's the class in this group, as we are, are already said. Um, Albania. Uh, very... I mean, you would expect them to win in the fair, fair rounds, but with all, all other results, especially the Poland result going, meaning that Albania, this was a big win for them. How Hungary get a routine win over Lithuania. Iceland Portugal was not a great game, but it was all about Cristiano. As I said in the o opener, he has 200 uh, caps. That's an incredible stat. I, I remember when Lothar Mateus reached 150, how unfathomable that seemed. And he was kind of this Iron Man uh, of German football. And Cristiano got the two. I mean, for Lothar Mateus, it has, has been, there was a period uh, for, for, for four years where he played very little. Uh, which Cristiano never really had. So, but still, it's an absolutely amazing result, and also tells you not only that he has a lot of games, uh, that he is a great talent, but also that Port Portugal usually went places with him as well. So uh, that always adds some extra games. But con congratulations for that. And then he gets late on the winner, which initially was given for offside, but it was a bo bogus call. As I said, the game was not the greatest. Uh, Iceland probably had even a chance, but then with a the yellow red in the 81st, uh, poor Portugal went on. But you know, Portugal can toy with this group because they will uh, qualify easily from it. Uh, Slovakia easy win at Liechtenstein, but as I said, with other results going their way, a huge boost for them. And then Poland, Moldova. Milligan Lewandowski assisted each other to give Poland an easy 2 0 halftime lead. And right after half, Nicolescu, far out shot where I think Jason has even a really clear look at it, makes it, gives Moldova a lifeline. Then in the 79th, Nicolescu again has the ball and runs outside, takes it, and then places it rather ni n n nicely. It's 2 2. And then in the 85th minute, Baboglo heads it in to make it a 3-2 win for Moldova. Huge, huge, huge ups, upset and putting Poland in real trouble. There's a Poland team that just had beaten Germany. Add that with Germany losing now uh, also to Colombia and you can see how bad Germany are at this moment. Uh, Norway's 3-1-1 win. Um, yes, Holland scored a pen penalty, but you know, they needed to get that, that one. And last but not least, Scotland beat Georgia 2-0. Conor McGregor giving them already an early lead, but then the game was suspended for a long time because the pitch was really, really, really waterlogged. Uh, made it hard to play. They took care of that. And uh, game play could uh, proceed. McTominay early in the second half gets the other goal. And then uh, in stoppage time, Kvaratskhelia misses a penalty again. Again, he's on a bad streak with penal penalties, I have, I have to say. As much as I like the, 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 this player, he's not doing well. But Scotland, 12 points out of, out of four, four games. Surely they will, qual they will qualify now for the Euros. As we can see, it's a 97% chance of qual qualifying. That's ahead of Spain. Scotland are in really, really good shape. 
um, and are already expected to finish ahead had, had, had Spain, but you know, Spain has two games in hand as well. We have France and Greece at the moment up top, but again, the Netherlands have only two games and it's just edge Greece at the, at the moment. But I think Greece could cost, cost them some, some trouble if Ronald Koeman doesn't turn it around. Uh, Ukraine also ahead of Italy. Now, all the uh, final 14s from the Nations League are outside of the qualifying spots because they have less games. Uh, it will come down to Italy uh, and Ukraine in this one if, if Italy want to qualify. Uh, I think that's the head-to-head. -head. Uh, another Croatia out, but Turkey and Armenia are in. Um, I think Croatia probably uh, will qualify relatively easy from that. That everyone Turkey should get the second spot. The Czechs looking also really, really, really good as to Albania. Poland, after three games, only one win and two losses. They need to start a winning streak. But I think, uh, you know, the Czechs and the Poles, it is rather tight. Maybe I would give... The model gives the edge now to Albania in on average, but I would just say that uh, Poland has a teeny bit more. Uh, the picture is much clearer in Group F with Austria and Belgium romping through the group. Uh, I think Sweden will have a hard time to come back from that. Although you never know, a, a win against Austria and Austria then maybe losing to Belgium could make it tight, tight again. But as an all, all Austrian at the moment, I feel rather safe then we have uh group g which is serbia and hungary at the moment i think those two will go through i think no 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 the other teams will uh, do it then finland kazakhstan denmark i think slovenia just maneuvered themselves out of it but this is a really 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 tight one where we thought that denmark should cruise through but at the moment it looks like finland are gonna can do a job there uh switzerland will cruise through but it's for the last spot where it's I admit it's some underwhelming opponents, but you know, Romania, Israel, Kosovo, uh, of course, it's between Romania and Israel, and I actually think that Romania have a decent shot of grabbing that second spot. And then Portugal also toying, and then it's a real slugfest for the final spot. It's more Slovakia, looks, Luxembourg looking good there, Bosnia having taken a real, real hit. So um, it's Slovakia ahead of uh, Bosnia for sure. And then we'll see if Luxembourg can get into that, uh, if at all. You also see it for the players, but you know, uh, the right one is maybe a little bit more indicative of what's going to happen because the left one, since all four uh, final four teams are now at the moment outside, doesn't really count. Um, winners and losers, Albania, the biggest one, but also Slovakia and Austria, of course. Lux Luxembourg also had their chances quite boosted, but I think it's more the losers here. And we have your Poland, uh, Sweden, Bosnia, and Wales, but Wales already got, got, got a, it was even bigger in the previous round. So Wales probably will not qualify and their part is over as well. I give you just here the next few games, but we'll talk about them when the next international break will come in early sep September. I think Netherlands, Greece uh, sticks out on the first page. Uh, second page, Slovakia, Port Portugal, Turkey, Armenia, potentially Georgia, Spain. This was a U, uh, good one. And then on the last one, North Macedonia, Italy and Ukraine, England. I guess those are the two that we will have to watch. Any case, finito. I'm gonna actually take a break now from the channel. I have some videos uh, scheduled, but I will take a little, a little bit of, of a break now. It was a long season and I need some time off. But in any case, please let me know what you thought about the action, the qualifiers. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!